Today is Monday, October 15th. In the Yechiel Foundation, we are continuing with the classes on the Zohar, which covers all of the esotericism, all the Jewish esoteric doctrine. And we continue with Bereshit, that is with Genesis. We still have three or four months to finish Genesis. It will have taken us a year and a half to talk just about the secrets of Genesis, considering that there are 54 sections, Genesis is one, but it is the most voluminous. This world is the shadow. No, we are a shadow or a reflection. The physical world is a shadow. Israel is a shadow. And everything we know and live is a shadow. But where is reality on another plane that the shadow doesn't see? You since you're on both planes, you can see the hand and the shadow, but the shadow does not see the hand, but the shadow follows the movement of the hand. So let's say I want to put a key into my hand. Where should I put it? Should I put it here? No, the key doesn't stick. It doesn't work. But if I go to the spiritual world and put the key in the spiritual world, what happens to the shadow? It holds the key. What do human beings do? We're so dumb. We want to put the key into the shadow and it doesn't stick. You have to go to the spiritual world and put the key where the origin of things is. And since humans want to solve problems where the shadow is, they never solve anything. But if you go up to the spiritual world and you can handle the spiritual world, there the shadow reflects that the door is open. If I want to open the door, where should I go? The physical world or the spiritual world? The shadow world or the world of origin of shadow? Now, repeat your question. What was it? Why is Israel in such bad shape? Because it wants to solve problems in the shadow world. You've seen the chalk doesn't stick in the shadow world. You have to go to the spiritual world. And since they are working in the physical world instead of the spiritual world, the problems are never solved. I think you've understood it much better with the shadow example. Yes, very well. So any problem you have in this world, where are you going to solve it? For it to be reflected in the physical world. If not, it will never be reflected in the physical world. Take for example, the crisis in Spain. Have you seen the president saying, we'll take a thousand people to meditate on the problems of Spain? You're laughing, aren't you? He'd never say that. Where is he trying to solve the country's problems? Here, in the shadow world. He'll never solve anything in the shadow. All it does is reflect what is happening in the spiritual world. I don't think he even knows it exists. All he sees is shadow and wants to solve it there. Everyone wants to solve this world's problems in the shadow world, but not in the world where the shadow originates. But you could say that most of mankind is religious and prays and supposedly has certain spirituality. So I'm going to answer that. My master, Yechiel, said the following. 
the worth of a professional is measured by the amount of sophisticated tools he has. For example, a surgeon. A surgeon will work in a hospital with all the latest technology. There are even surgeons who, from the United States, can do laparoscopic surgery in another country using robotics because they have very sophisticated tools. They are very advanced surgeons who can operate from thousands of kilometers away from their computer on a patient who is thousands of kilometers away. Now then, Prayer is also a profession. How can we measure the worth of a prayer professional from the sophistication of their tools? Do you think people have sophisticated tools to pray? They're not professionals of prayer. Here we are in a school of prayer professionality. It's called meditation with advanced names of the Lord. The more sophisticated our tools, the better our results will be. So, in another class, we discussed how in the quantum universe, infinite possibilities are offered. And of all the possibilities and circumstances that can happen to us, only one is fixed. Which one is fixed? It is the one we have observed, associated with an emotion and to which we have given gravity. Because everything that occurs in the physical world is subject to the laws of gravity, even an event. We said that when we meditate, we must use three powers, electrical power, magnetic power, and gravitational power. It is called Gravitational electromagnetism. We said that electrical power comes from the brain, magnetic power from the heart, and gravitational power from the liver. When an event goes through the brain, heart, and liver, it acquires gravity and is manifested. The selection of the circumstance can be encoded with one of the 72 names of God. But to make it real, it has to pass through brain, heart, and liver. Okay, through electricity, magnetism, and gravity. The Zohar HaKadosh says, let us make man in our image. It must explain what this means. It means that man must be able to access the secrets of the world of above and the secrets of the world of below. And man must form a link between the world of above and the world of below. That is what it means when it says in our image. When it says in our image, it is in plural. The Zohar HaKadosh says that the Lord took a rib from Adam. If you take a rib, a void is left. What did he fill the void with? He filled the void with flesh. And there is a secret. The rib of Adam is Lilith. And who is Lilith? Lilith is the she-demon, a demon, a spiritual energy that brings chaos to the world. How? How? She generates illusions, ghoulish illusions. That is the rib that the Lord took. Adam did not have a physical body. He had a body of light, but adhered to him. He had that rib. The Lord took that rib from him. The Zohar HaKadosh says that he put in its place flesh. Why? Because flesh gives pleasure. 
What is flesh? The physical body. The physical body gives pleasures. Why did God replace the rib with physical pleasure? Because the type of intellectual suggestion generated by Lilith was pure idolatry, but it gave pleasure. And the Lord could replace that morbid pleasure with a corporal one. What are the corporal pleasures? We already know them, mainly eating and conjugal relations. But since it says, let us make man in our image, it means that man, human beings, must be able to have spiritual pleasures, but not the pleasures generated by Lilith. The spiritual pleasures generated by Lilith, by the she-demon, that so damage human beings are those types of mental illusions that harm the imagination that a person generates when they pleasure themselves without the help of their spouse. That is onanism, that type of mental projection. That is what the elite left us. And the Lord put flesh in its place to have pleasure, but conjugal pleasure, the two together, man and woman, because one represents the world of above and the other the world of below. And by being together in conjugal relations, they make peace between the world of above and that of below. But if the woman is not there, there is no peace. But there is another type of conjugal relation that is practiced without a body. That type of relation done without a body is the bride, which is our soul, with the groom, which is the soul of the Lord. There is another conjugal relation. What is that new conjugal relation like? It generates pleasure as follows. According to Rabbi Moshe Chaim Lusato, a prominent Kabbalist in his book, Derek Hashem, The Way of God, says the following. He will acquire perfection over his perfection according to his effort, all the more so if he toils to understand their secrets and mysteries. For any matter that he understands will establish and achieve one of the highest levels of distinction and true perfection in his soul. Who is the perfect man? He who toils to understand the secrets of the Zohar. He is called perfect. Then something occurs. The Lord gives you a gift when you do that. What is the compensation for that gift? He has the power to correct the souls of others. What a great pleasure. That is the gift given by the Lord. He who toils to understand the secrets of the Zohar, of the Torah, the Lord gives him the power to correct the souls of others. Is there any greater power or satisfaction? No, there is not. And that is why it says, let us create man in our image. Why? Because he will have access to the light of above, which is this one, and will have access to the pleasures of below, conjugal relations. He has both pleasures, that of the soul and that of the body. And that excludes any demoniac adherence in their person because it is not possible for a negative energy to adhere to a person who is toiling to understand the secrets of the Torah. It does not exist. It is not possible. Let's continue. Then it says, man could not be complete until Hava appeared, until Eve appeared. Why not? Because 
It is male and female together, like the soul of the Lord and that of man together, bride and groom. And that is the image of the union of the heavens with the earth. What is the symbol of the union of heaven and earth? Rain. Why? Because rain fertilizes the earth, which gives forth its fruit. Now then, here there is a very delicate concept, and I need you to attune your intelligence to understand what I am about to say. You must be very intelligent to understand what I am about to say. Very intelligent. First, water evaporates. Then, clouds are formed, which then water the earth. What does this mean at the soul level? It's a metaphor. First, the water evaporates. Then, clouds are formed, which then water the earth. This is what happens in the physical world, but we are made in the image of the Lord, that is, the world of above and that of below. I've told you how rain works. What does this mean for the soul? Let's see what these brilliant intelligences say. The conveyance of the secrets of the Torah from a master to a student who will then convey them to others. Let's go bit by bit. First, water evaporates. What does this mean? Studying, meditating, the sweat of study, praying. Water evaporates, it vanishes from the physical world to the spiritual world. It goes up from below to above. What is that in the soul? Meditating? The soul leaves the body? You meditate. The body. You eliminate the body. When I meditate, when you have affinity with the shiur, you rise. When you visualize the letters, it evaporates when a soul leaves, when we rise to spiritual world to meditate. The water evaporates like a vacuum. The Torah. First, the water evaporates. Should I give you a hint? First, there must be an initiative. There must be an initiative. What is that initiative in conjugal relations? Compliments, getting warmer, getting closer. But first, water evaporates. Is it from up, down, or down, up? Down, up. Is the bride above or below? The bride is below. Then who must generate the desire? The woman. What is the desire of the bride called in sexological terms? Desire, what is it called? Libido. First, the water evaporates. This is the libido that the Kabbalist must have toward the Lord. Desire. I want to see you. I want to reach you. Initiative. First, the water evaporates. It's spiritual libido. If there is no desire, no one would be here. There would be no one anywhere. We would remain in the shadow world, and no one would aspire to go higher. The evaporation of the water is the image, the archetype of desire, of libido as desire. Then we must have spiritual libido. I love this term, spiritual libido.
what happens when spiritual libido is generated after the water evaporates, clouds are formed. What is the cloud? The cloud is no longer on the ground. The cloud is not below. It is in the spiritual world. What does it do? It settles there. It settles. There is a union. It settles above and below. It is half water, half air, half above, half below, because water goes down and air goes up. Half is up, half is down. That is why it's floating. There is union between air and water. Once desire has been generated and there's been union, what happens then? Rain comes down. And what does this rain coming down mean? Blessing comes down to the earth and inseminates the fruit. Who in this world has spiritual desire, libido? Who aspires to that connection? Why is there no blessing in this world? It's lacking libido. Or it's on the wrong track. It's focused somewhere else. Yes, on money, on material pleasures, on power. But who aspires to the spiritual world for the sake of the spiritual world? There is no libido. So there can be no union. So there can be no rain. There's no fertilization. There can be no fruit. What about those who study texts? Well, people who study text after text are in a stage of intellect. But intellect is one thing, and the soul is another. Intellect is one thing, and the spirit is another. The levels are body, emotions, intellect, and spirit. What libido are we talking about? The intellect that studies texts, or the spirit that aspires to something? The spirit. So the one who only studies texts has done nothing. So then, when it says, man, the bride of the Lord, first offers burnt offerings, the burnt offering is the archetype of libido. And when the smoke from the burnt offering rises to the sky, it tells us, the sky rains its blessings on the world. What burnt offerings are we talking about? So, the korban is desire. It's the archetype. It's the manifestation of desire. That is how I'm telling the Lord that I desire Him, that I desire to aspire to be with Him. But in truth, when sacrificed animals were burnt in the temple, when they were burnt, they were burnt in reality as a medium for burning the worst qualities of one's character. That is, the qualities that come from the beast within us are animal personality. Nowadays, there is no temple, nor do we make such burnt offerings. But when we want to burn our animal qualities, we are making a manifestation of the libido. It's very beautiful. Yes. And when we meditate on the names of the Lord, it is equivalent to a burnt offering. That is, it is equivalent to sacrificing our animal parts. Why? Because when we meditate on the names of the Lord, they correct the animal traits of our character, our character defects. Is that why they say that the Lord has a good scent that is that he likes this because a man can fall in love with a woman when she expresses desire but if she is cold to him his love for her will be in vain since we are the bride of the lord we are the feminine part we must express desire if not he loses interest 
what happens in the physical world is a reflection of what is happening in the higher world, in the spiritual world. Where must we have an impact in the physical world or the spiritual world? In the shadow or the world of the causes? We must go to the world of the causes. But if instead of Holocaust, another word was used, but that is the way it is called. Holocaust is the term used to refer to the sacrifices made in the temple by the priest, Korbanot. What activates blessings is the initiative of the people of Israel, that is, their libido. And the people of Israel are responsible for showing libido to their Creator. Then blessings come down to the entire world, which we do not always do. Those negative qualities are called the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And there are four of them. These are the ones with which a burnt offering is to be made that must be burned. I will list them for you. Idolatry. Murder. Incest. And adultery. That is the animal that must be sacrificed. Our animal. Our idolatry, our murder, our incest, and our adultery. And when we say murder, it does not mean to take a knife and kill a person. Speaking derisively about someone is a form of murder. What happened, according to Bereshit, in the Zohar, when they ate from the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil? That is when they acquired those four evil qualities, idolatry, murder, incest, and adultery. That halo, that shining halo of blessing was lost, and then they found themselves naked. They saw that they were naked, because that halo of blessing that they had, of spiritual connection, vanished. And then they dress themselves with fig leaves. And the Zohar says, what are fig leaves? The demoniacal forces, negative forces that adhere to them. Because once the shield of spirituality was lost, those forces of negativity came and adhered to them. They saw themselves naked. They lost the halo of protection the immune system of the soul, and they dress themselves in fig leaves, which represent the demoniacal forces that adhere to the person and generate so much pain in them. And that lasted until the people of Israel, from Adam, until the people of Israel reached Mount Sinai. What does that mean? The word Sinai has a numerical value that is equivalent to 130. That is equivalent to the word Sulam, ladder. And we are speaking of how to ascend the rungs through meditation, how to ascend from one spiritual level to the next. In other words, until we've meditated, we won't have taken off those fig leaves from the fig tree. From the fig tree. Those leaves from the fig tree that Adam and Hava dressed themselves in. How to get rid of those demoniacal influences? By meditation. Because until we reached Mount Sinai, there was no way to get rid of them. That is why it was said that they had clothing of light before, and then clothing of the body. From the light, they were called Or. And those of the body, flesh, Or. with Ain but the clothing of the body refers to demoniacal adherences. What is the problem with those demoniacal energies that adhere to the person? They create a screen through which the libido cannot be accessed. That is, it kills your libido. When the shine was lost, the idolatry, murder, incest, and adultery were acquired, 
we lost that immune system. The demoniacal forces adhered. They were called demoniacal, but not in a caricature sense. They were evil forces. They kill a person's libido. They cancel the person's desire to access the spiritual world. If that happens, there's a drought. What is a drought? The water does not evaporate. No clouds are formed. It does not rain. There is no fruit. There is hunger and chaos. The metaphors of the Zohar are amazing, simply amazing. When you say there is no vapor, no libido, why that happens, we have lost that conventional form from the time of Adam because you don't meditate. The demon takes it from you. But we can't have that libido because we lost it back then. So we don't even know that it exists. Our nature lost it. In the time of the temples, when we had the priests who made the sacrifices, they provided the intention for those sacrifices to symbolize a regeneration of libido. When we lost the temple, we no longer had that. And we lost two temples, that of King Solomon and that of Ezra. We lost both of them. We have to regenerate libido. How? Through meditation. Because meditation is equivalent to the burnt sacrifices that were made back then. The korbanot, the sacrifices. This example that you've given with the clouds and the water and all that, does it come from the Zohar? Is it written in the Zohar? This example of clouds and I've taken it from the text, page 227 of the Zohar. I can give you the exact scroll reference. No, I just wanted to see if nothing has been made up here. The difference is I explained it to you. If you read it, you may not be able to get the entire essence, but it's there. It's written in a way that if you're not a Kabbalist, you may read it and say, this is complicated, but I've given it to you in a simpler way. It's as if I could give you an apple or I could give you apple juice. It's easier to just have an apple juice. I've given it to you in the juice form. It's already been through the juice maker. One thing that a student said earlier is that for there to be evaporation, there has to be heat, there has to be sun, there has to be a source of heat for there to be evaporation. So what is that? That is the Lord, he who calls us. But what is it? The initial heat? Is that the libido too? You need two things. First, you need there to be water. There must be water and heat, and there must be sun. Water is the emotion, and heat is spirituality. So if I show you how to have spirituality and how to have emotions, the water evaporates. What about the dew? Dew is the descent in the morning. It is the descent. Dew is already here on the earth. It is equivalent to rain. It is equivalent to rain. And the Zohar tells us, The Blessed Holy One, Hakadosh Barahu, will not reign on this earth until all those who are guilty vanish from the face of the earth. Who are the guilty? Those who do not meditate and have no desire. Those who have no libido. Those who only enjoy the pleasures of below and do not have libido and therefore cannot enjoy the pleasures of above, but they don't realize that the pleasures of below, to enjoy them, there has to be an order of blessing for you to have that pleasure. Excuse me. It's not a pleasure. The pleasure you have without libido is passing. It's not maintained. It's like a drug effect. It's immediate, but not associated with spirituality. It decomposes. It's like meat and milk. Let's say that milk is spirituality and meat is materiality. If you leave meat out, it spoils, but milk transforms. Milk transforms into butter, then to cheese, then to a harder cheese. It's always healthy, but meat, once it is spoiled, is not healthy. 
anything that is a material desire associated with spirituality does not spoil. Material desire that is not associated with spirituality does spoil. You see that? Think of milk and think of meat. One gives life, the other death, and it leaves you empty later. The other one doesn't. It leaves you empty. So, we've spoken about he who toils to unravel the secrets of the heavens. But even to unravel these secrets, it's necessary for the Lord to want to reveal it to you. Because if the Lord doesn't want you to see something, you won't. And there we have another problem. We've always been told that wanting to see it makes it exist. Yes, but who taught you to see? Who taught you to observe correctly? And it tells us the mysteries of our Creator will only be revealed to those who fear Him. But what does it mean to fear? What is fear of God? He who is amazed before the revelation of a secret, that jaw-dropping amazement, that pleasure of the person amazed before the secrets of God is said to fear God. And the prophet who expressed that type of fear was Hanoch, Enosh. Hanoch was called Na'ar, which means adolescent. Why did they call him adolescent? Because an adolescent, like a child who has begun to grow, is surprised by everything. Their first kiss, oh, an older person has had two or three thousand kisses. They can't be excited by them. But a first kiss for an adolescent is different. He who is before the secrets of the Lord like an adolescent who has had their first kiss in ecstasy, total enthusiasm. That is why Enoch is called adolescent. And he learned the supreme wisdom. And the Lord took him from this world for his service. He reached levels in which he ascended. He reached spiritual levels from which he became a servant of the Lord. So we'll stop here. We'll take a break and then do the meditation. I went to the McVeigh right before coming here this evening. And I was meditating for an hour. And I asked Akadosh Baruch Hu what meditations we could do here. And after a great deal of spiritual work, an inspiration came to me. I'll tell you what it was. We must make peace between the world and the Lord. We must make peace. Between the physical world and spiritual world, there is conflict. To go from conflict to harmony, a virtue is necessary. It's the virtue of making shalom. So, from that point on, I asked, how does one make shalom? How does one make peace? He told me, there is a patriarch who can show you. Who was it? Aaron, the patriarch Aaron, the brother of Moshe. Because his main virtue was making peace. He made peace between husbands and wives, between people who were in conflict. But that same virtue can be used to make peace between the world up above and the world of below. Within the Sefirot, which is the Sefirah of Aaron Akoin, Od, which is the name of the Lord that corresponds to Od? 
Elohim Sebaot. So what will we meditate on today? Elohim Sebaot, to make peace between the world of above and the world of below, to reconcile ourselves with the Lord and do away with the conflict. Why don't you take, for example, Yud Kevavke with the vowel U? We could do Yud Kevavke with the vowel U, but he told me, Elohim Sebaot. <laughs> so we have to be a little dumb and a little disciplined. This is the name of the Lord of the Sefirah Od of the Patriarch Aaron Akoin, the first priest of the Temple of King Solomon, whose main virtue was making peace among the people. So we will now call the soul of Aaron Akoin to make peace, to reconcile man and the Lord. It seems logical once it's been explained. Are you ready? Students, we will call Aaron Aquin. No more, no less. I want to tell you one thing. Once we've called him, he will do work that we will see. The beautiful thing about this meditation is for each person to describe what they've seen, what our Nakoin has done to reconcile man and the Lord. Now, let's put our hands, palms up on our knees. Let's put our feet on the floor, parallel to each other. We take three deep breaths. Again. Now. We will take the golden thread and connect our hearts in counterclockwise motion. And we say the word Echad five times. Now we see ourselves within a golden star of David. We call the letters inside the Magin David that works like a screen. We call the letter Aleph. We light it. The letter Lamed. We light it. The letter He. We light it. The letter Yud. We light it. The letter Mim. We light it. We now have Elohim. Now the letter Tsadi. We light it. The letter Bet. 
we light it. The letter Aleph, we light it. The letter Vav, we light it. And the letter Tav, we light it. Now we have Tsebaot. Now we unite all these flames into a single central flame that will burn out of the tip of the star of David that works as a screen and is attracted by the tip of the star of David where we are. That light penetrates our star of David, goes down, lights up our skull, lights up our brains. It goes down to the heart and lights up the heart. It goes down to the liver and lights up the liver. It ascends to the heart, lights up the heart. It ascends to the brain, lights up the brain. It descends to the heart. It ascends to the brain. Heart, brain, heart, brain, heart, brain, heart, brain, heart, brain, heart, brain. The flame goes out through our skull. It generates a cloud and snowflakes of energy fall all around us, drawing toward them the energy of Shalom. Now we form a chorus. We put the earth in the middle. We project the light we have inside us toward the earth, wrapping it in a mantle of silvery gray light. Now we see that the soul of Aaron Akoin descends to the earth and we will see what he does. Each of us will meditate freely on what they observe, on what Aaron Akoin is going to do in this world. Now we take three deep breaths. Again. Again. 
and we open our eyes. Well, he simply came to see me and told me reconciliation will never be possible between humans and the Lord if the secrets of the Torah are not studied. The remedy for reconciliation with the Lord is to study the secrets of the Torah. And since you're studying it, I will make each of the secrets revealed in this and other classes into an angel of reconciliation, and I will give them power. And they began to come out, one, two, three. And he said, I'll give them power now. And it was like a firework show of rockets going up from the ground, going into the sky, angels of reconciliation of the secrets we discover here, like an amazing fireworks display. It's another way of seeing it. Well, that's it. We will conclude today's class here. It's already 11 p.m., so it's time, isn't it?